Okay, hey y'all, this is Robin with Heroes Legends Studios, and I wanted to create a follow-up video. And this is uh, a big thanks to Maui Game Studio. Thank you for the comment and the suggestion. Uh, and if you guys don't know, I'm going to just do a shout out right now. Maui Game Studios, uh, I've been following him on Twitch for uh, quite some time. He does great videos. He's been working at RPG. RPG maker for quite some time and uh, I just really like to watch his streams so definitely check him out on Twitch it's Maui Game Studios as well as his YouTube channel uh, another shout out is uh, Zephyr Games uh, I don't remember it exactly sorry but I'll leave a link below as well um, she's also we might do a collaboration with her um, about some RPG maker tutorials and trying to get and build a better uh, video tutorial series out there for RPG makers uh, devs so because again and again we hear a lot of the same old questions you know how do you do X how do you do Y well we're gonna make a lot of videos for everybody for the whole community so we can all learn and build together so uh, so big shout out to those two and if you're not following them please do um, they inspire me and hopefully I inspire others to kind of uh, start building their games and working um, you know build creative solutions to RPG maker problems that are there um, anyways getting back to this this is a suggestion that uh, Maui brought up was that well you know I only show three buttons and well what about multiple rows from having multiple pages well that's actually a great a great question because that makes things a lot more complex for the phone menu and the, any picture menu because we can't just deal with a horizontal menu we should also be able to manipulate a vertical menu and so um, this can be quite a handful at, to the beginning and I'm most likely going to come up with the following full tutorial on how to properly uh, program this because in the end this will be much nicer in a script but if you want to uh, event everything because eventing is to me a lot more easier to follow and understand the logic of what's happening than to write a script if you don't know the syntax of the language which is JavaScript so again just working off of my previous uh, tutorial that I made and I'll upload this to my github uh, and make everything available um, there may be an act another follow-up video for this showing the expansiveness of having multiple pages and having multiple rows who knows maybe even adding a swipe feature and things like that all through eventing uh, and very little scripts so uh, let's get to it so I'm adding three more buttons to create a second row and uh, I all that all I did was add that little feature uh, to it and so what I want to do is right now only the top three buttons are functional uh, but I'm gonna add that second row and the the way I think about it how I'm thinking about it first so um, so we get those positions in for buttons five six and seven those those buttons are also gonna be have the picture touch menu to them picture number five and they're going to go to the same events. Um, hope everyone's okay with that. Six and seven. So that's the plugin. Uh, so this is exactly how expansive this can get and how quickly it can make this small event, um, common event, to just a massive uh, view of events so another thing that we have to update is the we're gonna add in a down button and a right up button to increment values not only that we've also increased the size of our button list so it, we're going one to six now and so if we hit zero we're gonna go back to six and if we hit seven we've gone too far and we need to go back to one okay uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about there please watch my previous uh, videos so what we're going to do to try to speed this up a bit I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and okay I'm back uh, so uh, all I did was 
get four, five, and six buttons working. So that's pictures uh, going to be five, six, seven in the event. And you can see that they I can move to them back and forth, just still using the left and right buttons. They open up the same menus as the menus above them, so the same colors will be coordinated with the same um, uh, menu that they open. Uh, I didn't want to deal with that, so open whatever menus you want. Anyways, so back to our common events. Uh, here it is. This is what I did. Uh, again, this is where this is why the script gets very long, uh, or the event gets very long because it's a lot of duplication and it just takes up a lot of space. So button one, button two, button three, button four, button five, button six. So even those little simple things take up about four lines. And again, erase pictures one, two, three. Now we add it five, six, seven. Uh, we have to do that when we select button. We have to change the color things like that um, you know we have to tint the pictures correctly every single time so this just adds and adds and adds and this is fine if you're okay with looking at the large portion this isn't gonna break okay um, and you gotta do what you gotta do if you're gonna have a hundred buttons you're gonna have a hundred uh, things to do right so nothing wrong with that that's where scripts kinda really come into play and really enhance a feature so I'll make another tutorial because that's going to be quite in depth about how to properly script convert an event system like this to a script and how much it can be improved so really this is going to be a building block tutorial when it was never really meant to be but I'm glad it, it's becoming and kind of evolved from what it is so anyways Okay, I am back. All right, so quite a bit, uh, quite a bit to do. Uh, again, just went and added three more buttons. Uh, we're gonna take a look at it real quick, so you can see what I did. Uh, just added three more buttons so that we can really see how the logic works and how it can really expand into something very large. I've got it wrapping around. You can press the right arrows to cycle through one through nine. You can go left and go backwards, or you can go down and jump to the next row over or up no problem okay haven't messed with touch points uh, but touch points is actually the easier part so how did this work and how can you expand upon it in your own project to get uh, more rows and more buttons on a single page so everything's pr very easy you just add more buttons position them appropriately and you know don't forget to update their tints uh, however you however you like don't forget to erase them don't forget to give them uh, when you're selecting don't forget to give them actions on where they go and what menus they open um, so very easy that's the easy part right we've increased our number so we're going from zero if you go backwards if the number equals zero then it goes to nine if it goes to 10, it goes to 1. So really, these are only going to be hit when we're using the left and right arrows because they increment by 1 and they decrement by 1. The up and down arrows will increment by 3 and decrement by 3. This makes it a little bit more complicated. Um, so I thought I'd never be able to go over what the modulus is, but here we are. Uh, so the I found to be the easiest logic is that well we know the max number of buttons we have is nine so when when we press the down button we're going to increment this current selected button by three then we check to see have we've gone out of bounds of all the buttons we have so the total number of buttons is nine if we are on button nine and we move down we expect to go to 3, but we're going to add 3. So it's technically 12, but we don't have a button 12. So what do we do? This is where the modulus comes in. And if you don't know what the modulus is, um, it's basically just the remainder of a division um, equation. So what happens is it takes the current value of current selected button variable, which is 12 at this time, because we're on button 9, incremented to th plus 3, it equals 12 and we use the modulus of 
the divider. So the divider is 9. Um, so we take 12, divide it by 9. What do we get? Um, we get a remainder of 3, which is what the modulus is. It gives us the remainder. So um, the easiest way I can think of this is um, I think what we have is a good example. Uh, you know, if you have, if you divide 9 by 9, you get 1. So that has no remainder. So it would return a 0. Uh, if you get 10 divided by 9, it's going to give you a 1 and then a remainder of 1. This is basic math. Um, I hope everyone understands what I'm talking about when I'm talking about remainders. If, if not, please ask in the comments um, but if you divide t uh, 10 divided by 9 you're gonna have one remaining remaining right obviously 10 doesn't divide into 9 equally or vice versa however I haven't been in school in who knows how long anyways so this is gonna kind of chop up our bigger number to 12 into what we actually need and kind of cycles them over quite naturally I think so if we have a 10 we divide that by 9 it gives us a remainder of 1 so that means we should be on button 1 so in this case we're on button 7 we increment it to 10 we divide by 9 that gives us 1 so it means it wraps around to button 1 which is exactly where we wanted to go and the same instance is uh, if we're on button 8, we hit plus 3, 11, divide that by 9, we get a remainder of 2, which means we go wrap around to button 2. So this actually is a perfect example of how you can use the modulus operator, and it works exactly what you need. It's, this is how I mostly use it, is a wraparound uh, for variables and any of my other logic. So if this is something new to you, cool. You learn something, I hope you can use it in the future. It's very handy. Um, it's just not often you programmers really use it, but there it is. Anyways, uh, the up button works in this, uh, it actually works completely different. We use that for the modulus to wrap around because we go from a higher number to a smaller number. But really, in the opposite direction, when we subtract the number, we're going below zero all we have to do is add 9, right? Um, so if we're at 3, uh, sorry, yeah, if we're on button 3 and we subtract 3, we're at 0, well, we just add 9 when we're at button 9. Really, that's all that logic is. If we're at uh, 2, we subtract 3, we're at negative, uh, negative 1, and you add 9, that's 8, right? So pretty easy logic there, and that's kind of all you need. Um, this is like the new logic, uh, I think, that would most likely probably trip people up when adding rows. Um, when we talk about pages, oh, that's going to be another thing. Um, and obviously, I think this video is getting long enough for... Um, but you can see how much longer this is. And I'll upload this as well um, into a separate part. It'll, it'll probably just be a follow-up project so no one gets confused. But... There it is. Um, I think, uh, let's see, all these actions, if we look at our touch points, the touch points don't really change. Um, you don't have to add any more because we're opening the same pages. Yeah, we're going to have to tint these. Don't forget that you have your weights in here. I see, I don't, I didn't even add my weights here. Shenanigans. Anyways, um, this is also what update this logic here. Do I need to go over that? Ugh, that gets gets tricky. Um, I'm not gonna go over that in the video. I think the video is long enough. But if you want to know how, uh, maybe I'll just post the post the picture in the comments so everyone knows, or follow the project. Um, this is also gonna tr get tricky, but really not because you do expect it to to open its own menu so this really shouldn't be a problem that you run into it's just set the variable to what you expect the button to be so that when you go between touch and keyboard movement it's exactly what it needs to be and update and tint the pictures as necessary push the, the scene that you want so 
really, you don't have to do much there. Um, but I guess that's it. Uh, I really hope everyone likes this video. Um, it was really thrown together um, because I just haven't had time to really go over everything. But again, um, thanks Maui Game Studios and for the suggestion. I think this is a great follow-up question uh, into a tutorial, and it was a very creative tutorial. And how far you can like take such a simple concept and evolve it into something um, bigger, because that's what I hope people can really pull from RPG Maker so because uh, it's a great engine um, you just have to come up with creative solutions uh, for some of its uh, little drawbacks but hope you liked the video hope you learned something and again like and subscribe and check me out on twitch at monkey king twitch thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time